the Gaelic Football Preview on Off The Ball. With AIB, proud sponsors of the GAA Senior Football Championship. Check out hashtag the toughest for more. I do love a ridiculously specific sting. Thank you for that, uh, Mark Hagney. Uh, it is Richie McCormick here with you tonight on Off The Ball. It's time to look ahead to the weekend's uh, football championship action. Essentially looking forward to the football championship as a whole and a busy weekend is on the way. We've got Donegal and Armagh to look forward to, Mayo and Galway, uh, amongst others. And to look ahead to all of that, I'm delighted to say we're joined by Conneth Gilligan, ex of Derry, and also Eamon O'Hara, ex of Sligo. Gents, good evening to you both. Good evening, Richie. Uh, Eamon, I want to start with yourself because... I'd imagine it's probably been a pretty hectic 24 hours or so uh, because the first ever uh, Connacht under-20 football title for Sligo last night and a quite incredible game at Markovich Park. I was only keeping tabs of it online for the bulletins. So to look at it, it was initially Sligo were in the ascendancy thanks to a couple of first-half goals. Mayo kept chipping away at the scoreboards uh, all throughout the second half, essentially. Sligo down to 40 men, but then buried five points uh, in the arrears. And then those late goals uh, from Owen Smith and Jack Lavin uh, won a first ever Connacht title, title at under 20 level. Just an incredible night for Sligo. You summed it up perfectly, Richie. Huh. It was an incredible night. Um, you know, for me personally, I blew my hands, I blew my calf out in the third goal. So Lee's ball in where Owen got it, and I jumped up and completely pulled my calf. So I was absolutely out of it in terms of celebrations last night, but the boys had a great time. Um, but yeah, I think overall it was, uh, it's, it's kind of just rewards, I think, for this group of lads. Desi uh, brought me in here this year. Uh, he's been there, Desi Sloan, for the last three years and worked with a lot of these guys. So he knew a lot of the older bunch. There's almost like three phases of ages in this group. Sure. Just sort of your 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds, and 19-year-olds come into the 20s. So he had some of these lads at 17 and, uh, you know, he's watching them mature and, and, and get very, very close. But this year... Um, you know, we rode our luck yesterday to a certain degree. Mayo had their homework done very, very much on us, uh, really squeezed us in around that middle third. But the two early goals really, really sort of set it up for us early on, I suppose. When you're not winning uh, primary possession, if you're under pressure, but you have a two-goal lead, it takes a lot of scoring for the opposition to get back into the game. So we kind of had that as a cushion. And then the second half, we probably left it behind us a little bit in the dressing room. We talked a little bit more than actually what we did. And um, I think we just got fortuitous in the end we just had to hang into the fight and you know the goals which we knew obviously looking at Leitrim in the semi-final against Mayo I threw a couple of long balls in we had talked about that it wasn't going to be one of our main strategic plans but we said sure listen put it in there and see what happens and then we obviously introduced Brian Byrne who from Curry, who uh who caught two or three great balls in the second half coming out of the end and he just stood in front of the goalkeeper and thankfully the ball went straight in from Jack and you know the scenes were brilliant I suppose Winning a game like that with a sort of a last kick of the game goal is always going to be exciting, but it really didn't go to plan. But the plan was to win, so we'll just take that as it is, Richie. What were the expectations coming into this season for the under twenties? Uh, to win, to win, to be brutally honest, to win an yeah. All Ireland final. Um, you know, we watched Offaly last year and looked at a lot of their games, and uh, you know, we saw we were a little bit off the whole sort of scene in terms of the under twenties of their development and everything else, how we approach games and. You know, obviously, when I got included this year with the lads, um, there was no stone left unturned. You know, they got a great team of guys in there, friends of my own, Richard and Fintan Kennedy, Conor Mara, uh, an ex Sligo footballer, uh, Sean Smith, goalkeeping coach. Obviously, Paul Higgins is, our, is the coach uh, that has been with Desi down through the years as well, and Desi has a wealth of experience. And, you know, we really, really worked on strength and conditioning with, with King um, and, and, and Bradley, and the two of them worked these lads really, really hard. We got them to a level of fitness, and uh, we just sort of set out, set out each step as it came. We probably knew it was going to be Roscommon. Obviously, the first game, we identified our key players and sort of tried to nullify that. It's all a learning curve for a lot of these guys. And the habit of winning isn't there. There's a real habit of losing. And there's an understanding how to go and win games. So, you know, we built on that in, that, in, the, in the Winter League, if you want to call it, or the Spring League, where we got to the final against Westmead. And... You know, got bet by two points, but it was a real learning curve and played some very, very good challenge games. So the self release started to come, and then slowly but surely, we just set out the individual steps. It's four steps to an All Ireland final. We've taken two, and uh, not to sound bullish or cocky or anything like that, we just sort of said we're capable of winning because <clears throat> myself and Desi and Khan and Finton, we we suffered huge defeats at underage and at senior level with Mayo down to the years, and obviously we were coming in Galway. 
and we'd have a more of an inferior complex than these young fellows. These young fellows have played them at under 16 and minor and have bet and have bet Mayo and, and Roscommon and Galway. So there's no inferior complex there. So our messages had to be a little bit differently. So they were they believed in themselves. Uh, they're in college together. Some of the lads are are in freshers playing with some of the Mayo lads in UCD or UL, wherever it might be. So yeah. they saw that they're just the same guys. And you know, it's it's that having that self-belief in yourself and, and going for it. And you know, we always wanted to be competitive, be in the game right up to the bitter end. And the lads showed that massive character today or yesterday. And uh, that's down to a lot of work over the last three years. And we know this year is just the icing on the cake. Finally, as well, the emotional aspect of last night too, coming so soon after the tragic passing of Red Oak Murphy has, has got to be a huge thing for the players. Yeah, it was very tough. And when we heard it, it was kind of... I, I, st- I still think we're... Still trying to get to terms with it, to course, be quite honest yeah. with you. Um, but you know, we sort of the first thing we did was get all these lads in and get them just talking and you know, you know, expressing emotions that at 17, 18, 19, they don't do that, uh, they keep it all in. But we had such an honest meeting, uh, with particularly a lot of the curry lads, Brian Byrne. I mentioned he came on, there's three other lads there as well, and uh, from the curry club, and they would have known him really well. And, and Burns would have been good friends, but probably best friends with, with Red Oak. And, you know, he talked passionately within the group and you know for a guy that's an even sort the way he spoke um really really touched everybody and, and you know we, we, we it brought us together in one way but at the same time there's a re- there's a there's a reality that you know football isn't the be all and end all and i suppose you know i'm talking about i'm talking about a, a, an unfortunate passing I, ju- I just on behalf of the sligo team i just want to pass on my condolences to to the Galway Camogie player Kate Bourne and her family and all her friends and uh, you know our thoughts are with them you know we're we're over the moon up here in Sligo they're going through something tragic down there but we've had our time there a couple of weeks ago and it brought <coughs> everyone together but there's no doubt about it Red Oak's legacy will remain and he's had a, such a, an influence for such a young man he's such an influence on everybody in the in the county. Beautifully said, Eamon, and congratulations again uh, on last night. Um, we'll get down to the business of, of this weekend. Uh, Conleth, I'll bring you in here because there is an element of, of Super Sunday almost about the, the games that we have on offer to, I guess, in a broader sense, open up the, the, the championship this Sunday because we've got Mayo Galway uh, out in Connacht. We've got Donegal Armagh in uh, Ulster as well. And then on top of that, uh, we've just got a plethora of matches to play through. We'll start with that Donegal Arm album because to say there's a bit of spice to this one going into it is to put it mildly, Conlet. Yeah, it is. And the championship started last week with a bit of a whimper. You know, obviously, there wasn't really much expected. Throne were expected to win, Leitrim were expected to win, um, Sligo were expected to win. So that happened. But this weekend, it is a step into the unknown. And obviously, after the league game, the suspensions, the appeals, players getting off. It's just been the subplot till it's just incredible. And the game in Bally Buffet is just the one that everybody's looking forward to and everyone's lips this week. Yeah, because Armagh during the first portion of the league certainly put themselves forward as a team that could well make that next step towards being potential All Ireland contenders. Now we'll be in fairness a bit of a jump for them considering where they've been over the last few years, but it has been a steady progress. Um but I guess everybody is just talking about this game that we had in the league. Obviously, there was a, just a point between them uh, on the pitch. But when you factor in the sendings off, the battles of appeals versus no appeals, Armagh getting the trio off and Donegal opting not to bother to appeal. And what what did you make of that whole appeal non appeal saga, as it were, since that game? Yeah, well, look, I, I'll be honest. I was very surprised. Um, obviously, Neil McGee hasn't started a lot of games this year, but he's a massive character and he'd be a massive player coming on. Um, you know, so not not appealing. Like, it's his last game in Bally Buffet. Perhaps Orn McFadden Ferry has been one of the most consistent performers this few years. So those players, I just wondered, you know, was it a player decision? Was it a management decision? A county board decision? But in hindsight, now it looks like it was very, very foolish because obviously now Armagh is playing with a full deck and their preparation in terms of coming into that game would have been massive because everybody was trying to lift at 5 or 6% to make up for the players who are going to be missing. So they would have trained at a real intensity, whereas now Donegal may have taken their foot of the gas. So like, I think it was bizarre not to back your players all the way, especially in a situation where it was a melee at best. There was wee bits and pieces that happened, but no worse than Dublin and Kerry that, that nothing happened. So I thought every player that appealed had a fairly decent chance of getting off. And as that transpires, that's the way it's been for our mass. So Donegal, while well, luck cute at the start, 
kind of do look a wee bit foolish now for not going for it. Uh, Steve McDonald's come out with some interesting comments in the past 24 hours suggesting that Armagh players were targeted etc and that this was a concerted effort to try and get them uh, in trouble now what have you what have you made of those comments? Yeah look I don't know um, I don't know if I'd buy too much into that um, obviously things happen at the end of games and all it takes is them games are so fraught obviously it was a Armagh needed to win it to, to possibly push forward. You know, Donegal needed the points to avoid getting into the dogfight. So there was a lot at stake in the game, even though both teams would want to held something back to the championship. There was still a lot at stake, and there was a lot of the key players that were there that were going to be in the championship on Sunday. So um, it was already tense and touchy, but it, it's just like throwing a wee bit of petrol into a flame at a final whistle. Whenever you know, especially Letter Kenny, you're all down the one tunnel. It takes very little to set things off. So um, was it? A concerted effort from one side to the other. I find that probably just a wee bit of a stretch, but there was definitely going to be needle before it. And it's which team can avoid bringing that into the next game because that game, that league game's dead. You know, Donegal got the result, and it's who learned more from that uh, going into this game. Armar coming with a full pack. Um, probably Connor Mackin's back, but he's going to be injured anyway. Ushin Gallon's injured for Donegal, but I'd say to that it'll be two full teams. So. Um, Probably it's a big advantage to Donegal, or sorry, to RMI getting getting those guys back, particularly Aidan Nugent. He scored 116 through the league. So when you take his scores out of that, RMI were going to be a wee bit more toothless. Stephen Falker, or Stephen Campbell has scored 10 points off the bench. So the contributions them two men had made through RMI's league, you know, especially in the sticky air patches, has been massive. Yeah. Eamon, who do you think learned most from that game? Uh, it's a very good question. Um, I don't know. I think it takes a game of the. Uh, it's a different game completely. It'll take a it'll take a life of its own. Come championship. Um, obviously, the game played in Letter Kenny was always going to be a tactical one. They would never bring it to Valley Book Fay in case they lost that and then give Armagh the dress rehearsal to come down there again for championship. Um, the Armagh the the Armagh team were outstanding earlier on in, in the league, and I think once they show their hand a little bit, a lot of teams have sort of copped on to the style of play and. Their scores seem to have dried up a little bit as far as I'm concerned. And I know uh, Connett has mentioned some of the players there that are contributing. And they've been, you know, a, a breath of fresh air in terms of the league itself. Donegal have been struggling. And I think this is a big question mark over Donegal, what direction they're actually going. Um, is this the end of Donegal or this team? Uh, is it the end of the management if they don't win? Because I think there's a lot of questions in Donegal. There's still the talk around, you know, we hear about Aidan O'Shea, where's his best place to play? You'd hear the exact same situation about Michael Murphy, where they actually play him and where is he most effective. If you had two Michael Murphys, one would be midfield, one would be full forward, and you know, there'd be a different team. To me, it's going to be a real, real battle on the day. Um, Armagh are coming down very, very much in, 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 in confidence to win this one. I think this is the one they've been lining up all year. I think obviously the, the, the league has been a bonus for them. But they're going to come into a different animal in terms of the Nagal come championship. So it's so really, it's it's really really tight to call. Yeah. The 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 settings are, are the uh, the appeals which which Colin kind of spoke about. You know, to me it was it was a no brainer. You you appeal everything because there's always a chance, no matter what it is, with all these rules nowadays and the way CCC looks at different things and video evidence, you got to appeal it. Like you got to back your horse and and credit to our man. But I suppose the Nagal have been planning. That they're going to be playing whoever, if it is the Reno O'Neill who got taken off or who's got uh, his suspension clear, or if it's going to be Steffi, Steffi Campbell coming in, you know they'll obviously have their man markers. They'll have they'll have all that fairly well planned. But I think Armagh are coming down with a sort of a new wind in their sails now that they've got a full deck to play from. They've got a full panel to play from, minus the one or two injuries that they may have. So, I think for me. The league is not going to be massive uh, an advantage to anyone. It's going to be this, and I think it's Armagh that's going to be the one to the forefront on this one. Yeah, it seems like that win for Donegal, Connacht, to a degree, papered over what had been up until that point a fairly underwhelming league campaign for Declan Bonner and Co. Because they weren't pulling up any trees. They really did need that result in the final day, and, and maybe, maybe the 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 Barney on the sideline kind of added to things and helped them out a little bit to a degree to get their kind of blood up. But it did paper over the fact that up until then, they weren't that great in the league. Yeah, and they were they were very inconsistent. And even in Bally Buffet, Tyrone outplayed them for long periods of the game. And it's still a mystery how Tyrone didn't win that game. So that was another couple of points that they may not have deserved to pick up. But a lot of, you know, with the likes of Michael Langan missing, you know, Michael Murphy missing a lot of football, you know, those were key players. For, and when Johnny Gall were going well, them men are to the fore. And it just looked like, I think even touched on, you didn't really know what direction they were playing. Like they were... 
they were attacking the numbers, but then they were getting broke down and they were conceding soft scores, which is very on Donegal like. And again, the thing about it is, the one thing that Donegal have is a huge amount of talent. You know, when you look at, you know, probably Kieran Thompson didn't play as much football, but Kieran Thompson, Jack McKelvey came off the bench against Toronto and got a goal. So they've had players coming in, but it's just been that inconsistency of, you know, who's playing where. And I, he touched on it. What do you do with Michael Murphy? You probably let Michael do whatever he wants to do because he's probably been the most influential player in over a decade and, and that won't change. And for Armagh to win in Bally Buffet, they need to get Michael Murphy quiet for long periods of the game because if you think back to last year, Tyrone are all our champions. But if Michael Murphy doesn't get sent off against Tyrone, Donegal probably edge that game. So mm. when Donegal haven't been going well, they're still not far away. I still think they're at the very top end of teams that can win in All-Ireland. Who's what is even touched on? If they don't win one for me with Michael Murphy, they won't win one without him. Well, so who's going to be the man to essentially put the shackles on Murphy then come Sunday? Yeah, well, or, or, or does it depend essentially on where Bonner decides to deploy him on the pitch? Yeah, well, look, I think if he plays inside, Aidan Fokker will go in there with him and will follow him out the field. So um, Aidan will give up a wee bit of size, but he is, he loves that. He loves that fight. He's aggressive. Um, while he'll be giving away height, He'll, he'll match him for pace, he'll match him for a wee bit of power, but it'll be if Michael Murphy played at full forward, he would be at a disadvantage for that aerial battle on Aiden. But if he takes Aiden out the field, Aiden could hurt him the other way because Aiden's as good a full forward as full back. So I think Aiden Fokker will follow him everywhere and it'll be a case of can he negate the good things that Michael Murphy's at? And on the other side, I think Brandon McCall will track Rain O'Neill wherever he goes. And those are the two big players that make the both sides tick and whichever one of the markers can nullify the opposite number it'll go a long way to win in the game yeah. in Bally Buffet which Armagh haven't won now against Donegal in the championship from 2010 I think it's 12 years from anybody's beat Donegal and Bally Buffet so when the advantage for Armagh as the players coming back the game in Bally Buffet seems to be a real advantage for Donegal yeah Eamon is home advantage going to play that big a factor for you and if it doesn't this would certainly mark Armagh if the league didn't as being genuine contenders towards the latter end of the season. If Donegal are banking on home advantage, they're in serious bother uh, to be their to, to their go-to sort of plan. Um, yes, has been very, very good to them down to the years, but there's always going to be a time when you're going to lose and when that occasion is going to be. I think Armagh will play this anywhere. They'll have absolutely no problem going anywhere to play Donegal. I think, as I was saying, it's all about this game, this is what the first round of championships so that they can get some sort of momentum going. And as I was saying about Donegal, <clears throat> they're at a stage now where it's going to be, you know, shit or get off the post, excuse the language in terms of in terms of this group of players. And if they don't actually go on now and try and win an Ulster title, I, I believe they can, if they can get it right, if they can get the balance of defence and attack right. There was times there against Monaghan when I was up, I was doing a bit of commentary on it, and I have to say, Monaghan at times just ran up the middle of them. Two or three quick passes, cut them open. Now, where Mal will have looked at that, they've got that personnel, and the likes of Reno Neal can turn and deliver very, very early inside, or alternatively, guys will kick it into him. It's 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 set up in a way that if Donegal don't shut down early, but also get end product on the other side, um, I think it's going to be our Maz game. But home advantage, I think Richie, it's it's a, it's a big ask to be to be relying on that going into a first round of first round of championship in Ulster. It's set up uh, for a fascinating contest to say the least on Sunday afternoon. Really looking forward to that one. That's uh, Donegal versus Armagh in Bally Buffet. Um, next, we turn to your own home province, Eamon and uh, Mayo and Galway, who obviously meet in the uh, quarterfinals in Connacht. Uh, this coming Sunday I'm going to play you a clip from the football show and have a listen to Paddy Andrews here in episode 13 of the football pod and why he thinks Killian O'Connor should start for Mayo this weekend against Galway I think he has to start yeah, don't be like waiting for Leach from... otherwise they'll, they'll play Arm or they'll play um... they're not at the same level they're nowhere near the same level as him. this is a massive game for him. they'll get him for 35 if minutes you think, maybe from the Jimmy, start he played 20 minutes three weeks ago hmm. they played at least one challenge game, probably two. They definitely had an internal game, and he's played there. Think of what he would have had to have proven to Horan and the strength and condition and the physios and all just to get 20 minutes in the league final. So he's already had two or three weeks of ticking the boxes to play that. Yeah. It's Killian O'Connor, like this is not some kid, like yeah. The other guys are, are the other guys are the kids, like. Killian but I'm not saying he shouldn't play. Team. I think they'll get more value out of him for 25 when the game slows down a bit rather than at the start when he only has 35 in him anyway. Like, they'll have to take him off and the crowd will go, ah. Oh. 
Whereas if they bring him on, the crowd will go absolutely mental. Crowd will be going oh. wild anyway in this game. <laughs> like, yeah. Crowd will be going wild. Killian O'Connor's name, him and O'Donoghue inside. They could have the game won, the two of them. And if you bring him on with 50 minutes and Galway are leading and their tails are up and Mayo are struggling for scores, that's not a good environment for an inside forward to be coming into. It's harder for him, his style as a player, to come in if they're chasing a game, which is why they'd be bringing him in. Lads, I'm not a coach. I know nothing about coaching. I'd be starting Killing O'Connor. There you go. It's Paddy Andrews and James O'Donoghue on episode 13 of the Football Pod, which is right now on podcast in the OTB GA feed or in the Football Pod feed. Just search for it and it's brought to you in partnership with AIB, proud sponsors of the GA Senior Football Championship. Check out hashtag the toughest for more. Uh, Paddy Andrews, uh, Conlet, very decisive on saying they may all have to start Killing O'Connor this Sunday. Would you be as decisive as Paddy? Uh, personally, I wouldn't. Um, we obviously haven't seen enough of him. But again, for me, it's the psychology of the forward line for me. Uh, you know, like Ren O'Donoghue has been a breath of fresh air. He's been brilliant. Um, like he was the one player when I watched the Manoma against Tyrone that, that probably carried a wee bit of threat. If, for example, you know, you do um, play Killian O'Connor, who hits the freeze? And the one thing that, that Ren O'Donoghue has been faultless, um, he's been very good at them. You bring in another free kicker and he misses one and Killian O'Connor's on the pitch with him. You know, I just, I don't like the idea that the pressure that puts on Ren O'Donoghue having led the line for so long. Look, I think Killian O'Connor has a lot to offer, but for me, it would be bringing him off the bench. If he breaks down at the start, you've wasted a sub. But like, if you're coming down the home stretch and you need a point either to get over the line or to bring you back into the game, like there's nobody better. So for me, I would go with what I have. You know, the Alexa James Char was one big plus against Cherry for me for them and while they didn't set the world alight I sort of question just how much they were up for that game and, and bear in mind how many key players they were missing um, I don't think that'll affect them much but for me it'll be like let Brandon on hit the freeze play a forward line and when the game opens up and slows down I think yeah bring Killian O'Connor in Yeah Eamon that result in the league final I don't think the panic button has been pressed to the degree that I think a lot of people in the immediate aftermath of, of that uh, hiding the dance of Kerry thought that it would be um, that there's been a lot of mitigating factors essentially in, in how the team was put out that day and that it's only the league etc etc and that things will be right once championship comes around would you be as, as confident uh, looking on from an outside perspective that Mayo can actually put this all together against Galway on Sunday? Uh, the short answer to, to the last question would be yes but I think it's amazing how the narrative change um, when it wants to fit the when it wants to fit the sort of the subject, I think for me, Mayo getting into a national league title. I think there was a 19 when the last one at the celebrated, absolutely outstanding. This team is now kind of evolving a little bit, and a national title was would have been massive for this group of players. They're playing against Kerry, their old nemesis. You know, two years ago they were talking about Kerry, and we couldn't get over Kerry. We weren't able to beat Kerry, and now all of a sudden. When it fits the bill, it's well. We didn't really care about the league. I do think Mayo tripped into the league. Uh, they'd obviously found themselves safe enough, and obviously the way results then went in the end, and then winning the last league game found them get themselves against Kerry. I think they went up to win the league. There's no doubt about it. They tried to approach as best they can. You know, the 15 point beaten could have been more. Um, go back to the Killian O'Connor point, and I think sure I seen him coming on, and I just thought he just lacked massive pace. Um, he was on for about five or six minutes and he got up to the pace of it, but Tyke Morley had picked up a ball and Ty just started solo and then Killian just could not burn. He just burned Killian. You know, he, you could see the gap going from three, four, five yards. So will it be enough of work to get Killian up to the pace for coming back from an injury that he's had? That takes a lot of football. That takes an awful lot of game time and I don't think he'll be near it. Starting him, I don't think it's going to happen. I think they're going to stick with obviously Ryan O'Donoghue with the freeze. They're going to back the guys that he's been working with, James Carr, Orm, Doherty, uh, obviously decide where Aidan O'Shea is going to play, whether it be midfield or centre forward. I think if you have somebody, if you start a Killian there, you'll have somebody like, you know, Kieran Malloy or uh, Selk probably marking him. And first thing they'll do is just go, just go running and try and sort of just run the legs off him. So I think for me, it'll be a, it'll be starting on the bench and a huge, huge cheer when he does come in, be it, you know, with 10 minutes gone in the second half. Is he that kind of impact up when he comes yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah, he is. He's is just as an influential player. He'll always take your best marker. Whether he's carrying an injury or not, you know, him being there is just an exception. He, he's also a cool head, like, you know what I mean? We've seen him under pressure, taking freeze. 
Um, you know, he's he, he's got ice in his veins a lot of the time. So for me, yes, he has that. But he has to offer an awful lot more to football. You know, we talk about James Horn, Hornball and all that type of thing. Mm -hmm. He looks for athlete, he looks for numbers. You know, it's all about GPS figures and, you know, power, power, power running. Uh, Killian is not at that level right now. And unfortunately, Aidan O'Shea is getting to the wrong side of that. He doesn't offer that. I think there was a conversation there. I'm not sure where I, where I heard it, where they were saying where you should put Aidan and where you should play him and how you should play it. I think now the game has changed and evolved so much that it involves so much legs. You know, you look at their midfield in terms of um, Matty Ruan, Jordan Flynn, who's unfortunately injured. Um, they've just, you know, they're just cover miles. They're up and down, up and down from 21 to 21, supporting the play. And you've got the guys in the wing. And if you're not able to run now on James Horn's team, you won't be on James Horn's team. But, you know, the, the, the injuries for me will be will be key. Um, obviously, Paddy Durkin, who you'd be probably looking at saying he could pick up uh, Shea Walsh, if, if Shea is starting on the 45, was probably looking now like Oshin Mullen. Uh, he'll be a huge addition back into it. He wasn't there for the league final. And obviously, Jamie O'Connor is back as well. So I think Mio are probably in a better place going into this. You know, we haven't mentioned Galway as of yet. Uh, they played they played Roscommon. And to, be, to allow Roscommon beat you twice in six days, to me, I thought it was a huge mistake on Corey Joyce's behalf and the management team. Um, you know, they played a weaker team the last league game against Roscommon. They made seven changes and then played the National League final. And it just didn't happen for them. You know, the only shine, the only shining star was probably um uh I don't know, if, kind of Paul Conroy. He scored five points from midfield, absolutely outstanding. Um, and you know, after that, you couldn't pick a goal player out. It was all Roscommon. Roscommon really dictated the play. And uh, so for me, go we have started exceptionally well and we're probably the team of Division 2 along with Derry and both just seem to just dip at the wrong time mm -hmm. and coming into championship will it be will it be able to regain that listen I think it's it's the clash of the weekend to be quite honest with you it's the biggest derby that's actually out there I know there's lots of challenges up in in Tyrone and uh, with Tyrone and in Ulster but you know this is the one that stayed alive the Mead Dublin is gone the Cork Kerry one is gone but Galway, Galway um, Mayo is still there and I think there's going to be a huge huge on the Aidan O'Shea thing, it's it's always a fascinating um, conversation, Connacht, because th there is a sense that you know we've never really seen the absolute like you're you're wondering what his ceiling is because we're often told that like you know he's, he's clearly one of the best players in, in the country, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there comes a point where you need to kind of see it on a consistent basis, and I don't know if he's helped by this sense that we don't know where his best position is or we don't know where he's going to be deployed or we don't know, you know, essentially what side of him we're going to see from one game to the next. And it does seem, as, as Eamon alluded to there, does seem to go against all of the other tenets of James Horan's style of play and way of setting out a side that, like, I'm not going to call him a passenger, that, that's deeply unfair. But he is, there is an otherness about him that does seem to set him aside from the rest of that Mayo side. Yeah, and... Like, I think a lot of the criticism of Aidan O'Shea over the last number of years, whether it be people calling him out personally or or his performance or or what he did or didn't do or things outside the game, I think has been grossly unfair. Like he has been a warrior for Mio for, for so many years. Um, and I think he has suffered um by the fact that he didn't have an out and out position. You know, he was at, played at 14, played at eleven, played at eight, went to three at some points, was a you know, I, I seen him in the throne game up in Oma. And like I was really disappointed. He dropped in behind the defence and he played like a sweeper. And, and he was very effective for periods of it. But whenever the game was in the mix and they all got themselves back into position where they could have won the game, he attacked one or two times, 30, 34, 35 metres out. The shot was begging and he just passed one more ball in and it was turned over. What I would be looking for Aidan O'Shea is to, to grab the games by the scruff of the neck and have a go, score a point, something massive to lift the crowd because any time he does anything big, the crowd lift. And again, as like Eamon said, when Killian O'Connor comes on, he's just one of those personalities that lifts things. And I, I'm just looking so much more for him. His pace is power. But I would just love him to try and maybe get an odd shot away. For me, if you've got legs around him, you know, get him to the edge of the square. I would ask serious question marks of Kieran Malloy because when I look at the Galway team and I'm looking for balance and I've seen them through the league, obviously the Derry game was where they're at their absolute best. They caught Derry at their absolute worst. So I don't know if that was a mismatch. But as Eamon said, I was expecting them to win a Division Two national title just to give them something. Third year for Porrick Joyce and maybe a bit of silverware to try and say, look, we're, we're nearly here. Um, but if they play him at 14, would Kieran Malloy pick him up? Would they have to change radically? I have a 
suspicion that maybe Mayo might not start him and might keep him to come on um, this weekend. Um, and I know it'll be a big change, but when you look at Jordan Flynn, Matty Ruan in the middle, it's a powerhouse. Like Conroy's there, shot the lights out again, Roscommon, didn't mm-hmm. deserve to be on a losing team. But even at that, you know, with Sean Kelly, you know, Kelly McDade, there's runners all over the place. And if they get the wrong mismatch, this game is going to be high octane and it probably will take 20 points to win the game. Aidan O'Shea could come in, either settle it down or cause real havoc. So for me, I'm not sure this weekend probably suits them as, as much as other games. It's going to be a fascinating weekend across the board because we haven't even had time to mention Antrim and Cavan in Ulster, Louth, Carlo, Leash, Wicklow, Offaly and Wexford there on Leinster as well. And of course, getting football and off the ball in partnership with AIB, proud sponsors of the GA Senior Football Championship. Check out hashtag the toughest for more. I didn't realise going into this piece, by the way, that I had such storied rivals uh, going head to head on this because uh, Keen from Leitrim has informed us via text saying the next time Eamon O'Hara and Conneth Gilligan will meet is in the Leitrim County Final. O'Hara is managing Mole and Conneth is involved with Ballon the Moor. Uh, Sean Heslins. Is that right? You are going head to head essentially in the Leitrim County. Seri- they're paying them serious. No, they're that, coming down there, I tell you that much. No, no, that's not, that, that's definitely not correct. No, um, I just took, I took a session last year for uh, Dominic Corrigan, who was over, who's a good friend of mine. Yeah. So uh, that was as much, that was as much as my, uh, my involvement with Ballon Moore, but like <laughs> delighted for them, a really good group and, you know, to win that championship was massive for them. So, um, Eamon will have to wait to box me down the line some other, <laughs> some other place. I might invite you down to take a session with Mohan. <laughs> Man in demand. See, we're making connections yeah. on this show. Uh, Eamon and Connor, thank you so much for taking time out to speak to us this evening. All right. Cheers. Thanks, Richie. Thanks, Cheers, man. Man. See you, Connor. Bye. The Gaelic Football Preview on Off The Ball. With AIB, proud sponsors of the GAA Senior Football Championship. Check out hashtag the toughest for more. From morning.